being able to adhere to giving up not only food through like the fasting and water through the fasting, but more importantly, the giving up of sex was the most extreme and most, it was the highest form of discipline that I could have experienced, especially at that time in my life. So you think like my story today, right? You think me running in the snow is like a good discipline. You think me starving for 30 hours, 48 hours is a good discipline. None of those disciplines compare to not having sex or ejaculating essentially for three years. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. never too late to start. Yeah, it's, it's not. And like with you, like just saying that, it definitely made me think about, like I said, it's like I've had those thoughts. I'm like putting it in perspective. That's one thing. It's like really trying to grasp is putting it in perspective. I just do things out of impulsivity. Out of and impulsivity. Content. And that's the thing, man, is like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what the Bible talked about. Talked about people just giving into their impulses. And if you don't have discipline, if you just give into your impulses, you're no different than an animal. And I think it's disingenuous to be a human being and to give in to the animalistic primitivisms of your urges when you're capable of, which other other animals aren't capable of, choosing to be better, choosing to walk a path of optimization over a path of sedentary complacency because you realize in the end, you're blessed to even have that choice in the first place. Yeah. I mean, with me... I know it's definitely there because a lot of I've had so many impulse like I could have made a lot of decisions based on my impulse, but there has been moments where I decide no, I'm not going to do that. It's definitely there, but for I would definitely say that I'm still learning. Of course, and and just like we said earlier, Danny, it's the more and more you do it, the more it'll it'll transition from a system two to a system one way of thinking. It'll yeah. become more it become more instinctual the more habitual it is in your day to day consistency. It'll go from a very intentional, very thought provoking way of thinking, like you're driving a car for the first time, into a pretty chill, intuitive, laissez faire way of thinking because it's second nature at this point. Yeah, and now I think it's time to talk about sexual discipline. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, honestly, that's something that you know. It's just bringing that up. It's like. When it comes to sexual discipline, you told me about the time for three years you were in isolation from all sexual in- indulgences, just no masturbation, no sex, none of that stuff. And someone like me, I'm like, how do you do that? Because like, you know, if, if I go months without it, you know, I basically go insane. So like for you, what were what did you experience from those three years of isolation and what benefits just in general, what was the outcome of that three years of isolation of no sexual, like anything? Dude, that's a genius question. The best way to like really put it in perspective. What's, what do you think the number one drive of all animals are? Like, what do you think the number one drive for every single animal is? Sex, I'm guessing. To reproduce, right? Yeah. Reproduce. How do you reproduce? Through Through sexual intercourse, right? Yeah. So sex to me, is the number one, is the number one, let's just say, impulse that every single creature, not just humans, has and operates from, fundamentally, outside of hunger, thirst, and the precepts of survival, breathing, stuff like that, right? You ask what it was like, what were the effects, and like, what was the outcome of it, essentially? Yeah, just everything that you can just summarize in. The, the, do you want to talk about discipline? You want to talk about groundedness. You want to talk about appreciation. You want to talk about humility. All of these things come from legit, come from pun intended, (laughs) not coming, right? Come from legit not indulging in the number one primal urge all organisms behave by. Outside of food, water, and the fundamental necessities of living like breathing. Which is... Having sex. Yeah. For me personally, being able to have discipline in adhering to giving up, being able to adhere to giving up not only food through like the fasting and water through the fasting, but more importantly, the giving up of sex was the most extreme and most, it was the highest form of discipline that I could have experienced, especially at that time in my life. 
So you think like my story today, right? You think me running in the snow is like a good discipline. You think me starving for 30 hours, 48 hours is a good discipline. None of those disciplines compare to not having sex or ejaculating essentially for three years. That's just insane because it's like for any anybody in general, because I know women and men are like equally as sexually driven and just hearing that it's such a unorthodox and super extreme type of discipline that not a lot of people can handle because like you said we're we're very you know sexual creatures we are number one of our number one things is to reproduce and it's like man just someone who's never experienced that i mean for me like personally i've kind of something i've realized is that for a long time too going back to like acceptance was that in a way for me anytime I had sex it was it was another form of acceptance like because when I was growing up I would always hang out with people that would always just have sex all, all the time and I'm like man I need that I need that to, to, to feel like a man of, feel like yeah feel part of society right. and like you know feel like I need to I need to even recently like where I was having sex for months and then seeing people that were all just where they can't have sex for a week and it's like I need that and like going crazy and like to the point I was like you know the, that, that I was saying thinking with your dick and shit and like mine was going crazy and right. I was just like not give a fuck but then you know for me it was just like I would definitely have that moral dilemma it's like you know that that double standard right and just like and you should feel bad for having, but you should I'm not saying you should feel you shouldn't feel bad for having sex with multiple women the same way a woman should feel bad for having sex with multiple men yeah I think both should feel bad I think both should feel like degenerates for wasting let's just say the um for wasting the for wasting the worthiness of the activity in and of itself, especially when you find a worthy suitor. Yeah. And, you know, I could definitely say it's, you know, that's like we talked about society has, you know, distorted it. They just, you know, we, it's come become like a stigma and like, I've, you know, just hearing it from myself, like this is just me kind of realizing on the spot is that, you know, I've fallen victim to that, to that society it, stigma, you know what I mean? But Right now, I'm just like, oh, okay, you're like, you know, I'm glad you're educating me on this, like, because there's still a lot of things I'm ignorant to and that I'm not educated on hearing it. I'm and, like, and, and in hearing that, you should realize the moral of the story of that whole that whole um, point that I made is you shouldn't feel bad as a man wanting to spread your seed to a bunch of women. You shouldn't like feel bad wanting that, urging that, having that urge. You should feel bad acting on that urge with impulse. That's where the religious precepts come in with a lot of like ancient testimony is monogamy and especially in in the christian sense isn't like it's meant monogamy isn't meant to be some guaranteed this is how humans were designed to to separate themselves from the animal kingdom i think from the christian sense especially when you cross compare it to like the muslim sense the monogamous aspect of christianity instills like instills something that we've been talking about this entire time which is a form of discipline that can't be replicated in any other way no different than me giving up sex for three years, no ejaculation for three years. When you marry an, a single individual and become committed in a monogamous relationship for the child, because that's usually, that is what marriages were for back in the day, not only for building kingdoms with separate tribes and families, but for building a dynamic family for the child. The, you end up realizing the discipline of monogamy is no different than the discipline of fighting the impulse and urge to, let's say, murder somebody or let's say steal something or just do bad shit to go out and indulge. Those are urges that are justified. You wanting to spread your seed is justified. You acting on that impulse isn't. It's all within the same foundation pretty much. It's all within the same foundation of being a man, especially a, a man who's trying to find his way in this world and trying to find that worth. Bro, and this is another differentiation between men and women. Women have inherent value when they walk, when they are brought into this planet. Yeah, the, and I, I agree 100% because the fact that they have the ability to reproduce... Makes like, them infinitely more valuable than any man. And that's the point is like when, when you understand that difference, you end up realizing... They're inherently valuable. They come into this planet with value. We have to earn our value. Yeah, and it's crazy. This going off of that. It's like there's been moments where I've where I've had sex and I'm like laying in bed with them and I'm like, wow, like they're here in my they could be anywhere else. Like this is like they could legit be doing anything else, but here they are laying in bed and wanting, you know, to have sex with me. I'm like, because like with guys, like you said, we have to earn it. And I'm right. like, thinking of that like man like i earned it i earned this shit right. like you know what i mean because like 
with our society now, you know, there's so many different factors of like how you attract women or just people in general. Like it could be a, a factor of different things from looks to personality to, you know, the your 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 value of like what you provide in terms of like, I guess, materialistic it's, it's stuff. It's all about what you provide. But exactly. It's just do you provide the money? Do you provide the looks? Do you provide the ability to sexually gratify them? Do you uh, provide these things? Do you provide the worth? Yeah. And personally, something I haven't really thought about it just kind of happens. But I mean, like the fact that what I can take away from my own experiences from having sex is that the reason that I was able to attract these type of women in general, like I know I'm not the most attractive looking guy, but for me, the one thing I do have that has way more longevity than looking like a Greek God or whatever is a personality. That's something I've kind of realized. Like if as a person, that's something that brings value. If you're able to, you know, brings like make people laugh or keeps an like being able to make an interesting conversation or things like that this is something i've thought about like just recently so danny straight up though whether you think you're good looking or not is least relevant than how you present yourself yeah and if you're eating clean every day and working out consistently enough your body's gonna have no choice but to transition into something that is presentable yeah. That'll give you the confidence when, because now when you take off your shirt, what? Feels feels good. Feels yeah. good. Yeah. Now imagine when you're a year deep of having consistent savagery instilled in you, and then imagine how good you'll look. Yeah, and that and like I said, for me, it's, it's I just got to figure out what what's gonna what's that equation and and, for, and variables that'll help me develop that savagery. And, and like right. I said, you already you know you already have like you told me that foundation of like you know doing hard shit and like it could be a lot of things. Like for you, you have a different perspective than and I do, and it's just it's stilling on it. You know what I mean? Right. It's, like I said, it's going back to like you know my form is different than yours, but there's certain equations and value and variables that will fit into it and just applying to it. You know right. what I mean? Taking so taking the good from different teachers and then master redacting it into your own successful formula. Yeah. And I'm still learning for sure. Like, right. I mean, recently, we all are yeah, even I'm the a, greatest teachers that you're taking those wise things from. Yeah. And I, st- I, I still learn a lot, you know, for me, like I, my per- realizing I have like personally, I have a personality that's like not just attracting like just women, but like people in general and then right. like having that right energy. I mean, that's something I've, I've realized that I kind of lost for a little bit. Danny, let's talk about it though. That's why I like you're gonna be a shittier person when you present your shitty version of yourself to those potential networking people, to that, to your potential wife, to your potential friends, to your potential business colleagues. If you're not eating right and working out consistently enough, or at least trying to optimize your health, you're just going to present a shittier version. And when you think of it like that, it's like I need to maintain. In my base fundamental day-to-day discipline, no different than going to work and waking up and eating food, I need to make sure that the food I'm eating is good, and I'm also going to work by proxy of going to the gym and putting in that work. Yeah. And yeah. And that's well, got to be fundamental. Yeah, I, I would definitely say, like, for me, the, the working out part isn't honestly the biggest concern. For me, it's like, when it comes to the eating part, that's been the hardest part for me because it's not that it's not that I'm not disciplined. It. It's just that... It's hard for me to like, I get really disciplined on it, but I get, I don't know if there's such thing as too disciplined to where you get, I no, you just get too hard on yourself. Whenever yeah. you mess up, you say, well, if I messed up, I get, I'm done for the day. And then you, it's, it's all or nothing. It's the extreme, it's the extreme mindset of just the modern Western individual. Yeah. It's that, all, all or nothing. Yeah. That, that was me when it, like with working out, that was what it was for a long time. But like now it's like, okay, like, you know, just work out consistently. If you don't, as long as you get back on track, it's all that matters. That's the same with your nutrition. Yeah. That's the thing where I'm still like really having trouble with. And it's just the fact that like, if I get a diet plan, I stay committed to it, like hardcore, but like the, the hardest thing for me, for my own personal experience is changing it up and like having to switch. Oh, how am I going to fit this and that? Just overthinking it and dwelling then, on it. That's where you should be. I mean, don't you? Don't you feel good using me as a resource as much as you have, especially these past couple of weeks with really transitioning your nutrition plan and like your nutrition lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, I still I could be a lot better personally, but right, right. I, like you could ask me literally, "Hey Mitchell, I'm sick of eating eggs in the morning. What other breakfast alternatives can I eat?" Yeah, and it really doesn't it really doesn't stem from you. It just doesn't stem from you. It stems from like my own self insecurity about that for sure. Right, but that's again you your self insecurity is holding you back from utilizing the resources around you. That's something I don't understand. Dude, why. if I had a version, if I had me to help me, 
I would be milking it until I told me to stop. I think, I think from that, I think it stems from my self-worth and like, I, I could definitely say you could break down your self-worth into different categories. I would say like, just, this is all what I'm thinking about right now. It's like the self-worth, like you don't think you're worth, you don't think you're worth texting me and asking me for little questions like alternatives on breakfast options and shit. The stuff that's making your nutrition discipline harder. You don't think by asking me those questions, it would alleviate the difficulty of that, especially the pressure of having to do it on your own. I guess in a way it's still that, I don't know that that's, that kind of got me tripped up a little bit, honestly. Like I, I don't know on that, on that aspect. It's like, trying to to pinpoint is kind of hard like effort reflects interest and that's what th that's what you then have to ultimately ask yourself is maybe you don't think about reaching out and asking those things because you don't care enough or aren't interested enough to really making this clean eating a substantiated long-term habit that you can sustain the rest of your life that might be honestly like that that might be something that will be definitely better down the road but maybe it's maybe it's not like, you know, and then not a priority at this time. But why? That, that's, but that is the crux of what we've been talking about at, since two weeks ago after the Chiefs game. Yeah. Like I said, I just can't pinpoint why. It, it's, it could be the fact that it's not a priority. I don't know what it is, but. So, so this is why this is. So because there's uncertainty in why, that's where it's important to trust the process. That's where it's important to continue to at least track your food every day. Reach out to me and make sure that. Like the other day, your protein was finally up. You finally got your protein above a certain percentage, even though your carbs and your fat were a little high. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, you're tracking it, Danny, and now we can start calibrating it because you're doing the minimal effort of tracking your food and seeing what food you're putting in your body. And this definitely goes back to like when you had this conversation with, with Drake and Ronnie about the inconvenience of it, how tracking your macros, all this different stuff is not convenient at all, like whatsoever, but just having to make it a priority. Is... <laughs> dude is is checking on checking up on your tenants every day because you have an apartment complex with 100 plus people in it is that convenient no not at all if you have to let's say on christmas morning while you guys are all eating breakfast you have 150 plus tenants you have to worry about and you get a call because somebody's and they're having Christmas too because their faucet is leaking and they need to have their faucet fixed and it's an emergency because it's Christmas morning. Do you think it's convenient you have to leave your family for that? That's the difference though is some people are willing to do that and that's the thing. I'm not saying it's necessarily good or bad. I'm not saying there isn't more healthy ways to handle certain inconveniences. All I'm saying is life is going to throw inconvenience at you, especially the more you're trying to be your best self. Yeah, and I think the best example I could think of is, you know, working on Christmas Day, you know, missing out on, on that opportunity to, like, spend time with family, but, you know, how to do what I had to do. Got to do what you had to do, because guess what? Boys do what they have to do. Yeah. Boys do what they want to do. Men, Men do, do what, what they, they have, have to do. do. Nice. <laughs>